Next two pieces I plan to do are number 37 and number 39. One is the ram adjusting screw and one is the table or apron lead screw. They are both about three millimeters in diameter, about three inches long. That's about 75 millimeters long. And 540 threads on there. One's a left hand, one's a right hand. Both of them have a shoulder and a hex or a square on the end, as you can see. Just a little different on the offset. Looks like an ideal part to do at the same time. Let's do it. Because of the way I intend to approach this job, the first thing I want to do is confirm that my material is straight. The easiest way to do that is you just roll it on a surface plate and look for it to whip or hesitate to roll. If it rolls easily like this, then it's probably straight, because if it was warped, it would go thump, thump, thump. So a nice smooth roll like that is a good thing. And just look for light underneath it, of which there is none. So this is a safe part to advance out of the collet and turn in segments, which is exactly how I'm going to handle this. The technique that I'll use to turn these long, thin diameters is advancing the material. Pulling it out, turning it, pull it out, turn it, pull it out, turn it. As I complete each cut, as I make the cut, just before the end, I will dial back on the cross slide and leave a transitional area. When I start the next cut, I will start before the transitional area, engage the feed, and feed in with the cross slide until I hit the number take the transition area out, and off we go. An abrupt stop or an abrupt hit with the tool when trying this is definitely gonna leave a ring in the part. So since there's no sense in actually narrating, I'll do both of these parts, and we'll fast forward through. Just for sake of a clearer explanation of what I said before, as I turn these diameters, this is where it runs out from the roughing cut, and right about this area here is where I start to retract my tool. So if you were to put this on a comparator and blow it up, you would see a very gentle taper right there. Where the tool is right now is where I will begin the finish pass for this section back here. As the tool comes in, I will, as the, as the carriage starts to move, I will dial into my finish number and be to the finished value on the dial by the center mark. That way I take the transition taper out and continue with the finished diameter. I will do the same taper out right about there. It's a very trustworthy procedure and if the material is straight when you start, chances are you're going to end up with a nice diameter. Any transition marks or differences you feel can easily be taken out with a quality file and that is probably what I'm going to do to assure that it's smooth. This last cut will be to the overall length required on the print so there will be no transition since the shoulder is the stock size. Going to make contact with the front of the part, set my digital, and then I'll know exactly where to stop back here.
When you go to establish your length, you may want to turn the machine off. If the tool makes gentle contact with the end of the part, it could helicopter and walk up and over and ruin the part, bend it. So I'm going to shut it down. For the flip side operation on these parts, I will hold basically exactly the same way that I just did, turn as much as I can, and then switch to a smaller collet and hold on the already turned diameters to give me the really small shoulder that it requests. I was recently asked about how do I figure out order of operations, and I thought that was a great question, so I pinned that comment in one of the previous videos. This part right here will ultimately get turned to just about twice what it's turned now. This shoulder will end up at about that thick. Now when it gets that thin or that thick, the chances of it oscillating in a collet because it doesn't have a good cylindrical registration is greatly increased. So the next best thing would be to hold on this diameter back here to put these flats on. Actually it's a square. With it hanging out that far located on a thinner diameter, the chances of it pushing bouncing, ringing, resulting in a bad finish on the square is pretty high. So what I've elected to do is turn the diameter required to the dimension required for the square and have a little extra material to hold on for that operation. Then I can hold it here and finish the round. That's the plan. Go to the mill. This will be square when I'm done. Let's do it. Square features complete on the end of this part. I do have to remove more material here, but I'm going to leave this as is for the threading op. So I'll thread this first and then I will come back, hold on the 1 8 diameter. There will be some blank material left right here because the thread doesn't go all the way to the shoulder. So I'll feel confident chucking this up in a 1 8 collet and finish turning this as the very last operation. Kind of an unusual sequence, but it's kind of a unique part. And as promised, there is the small Remnant 125 OD right here that I'm going to hold on and flip. Oh, this, I can take this piece out. I'm committed now. Here we go. I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to continue this diameter to the required 156 shoulder, and this piece is complete. That's an awfully long 540 single-point thread. 
two and a half inches long. Like it. All right, that's your wrap. Let's clean it up, see if it fits where it belongs. Fingers crossed. The never-ending thread. Now, if all goes well, you saw me make this in a previous video. This is the table. I'm going to put a little bushing on the end of this so it doesn't slide metal to metal. And let's find out. Drum roll, please. It is a left-hand thread, so I am going counterclockwise with this. Okay, through the other hole, hopefully. It's like the picture. Okay, this is the unit that will have the little ratchet gear on it, and the paw will be controlled by a cam on the... Whew. I don't even know what it's called, but there's going to be a little arm that's going like this, like a woodpecker, and that little paw is going to go around, and this table is going to move just like that. There will be a nut and a washer on this side to keep this trapped. There you go. And I wish you could feel that. You can't even tell that there's anything on there. That is really smooth. I'm very pleased with that. I hadn't actually planned on filming the second half of this part right here. But I'm going to approach it a little bit differently. Let me show you how I'm going to do it. The ram adjusting screw has a very narrow shoulder in the middle of two identical diameters. So 540 thread is a 125 OD and this is 124 on this side. This is what the part looks like prior to. I'm going to do this exactly the same way as I did the other one but because of the narrow shoulder I am not going to clamp on the thread. I'm going to push it into a threaded bushing and run that threaded bushing all the way up against the inside of this shoulder right here. Now when it comes time to finish turning this diameter, and I'm looking to establish that dimension right there, I'll bump my tool against the face of the collar and move out a 30 second and zero everything out, and that'll be my target. And when I unloosen this from that particular threaded lug right there, I should have that 1 32nd shoulder on this part. And I think the only risk right there is, once again, locating on a thread. There may be some eccentricity at the very end, but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Let's see what it looks like. Let's do it. Okay, now I choose not to hold on to the thread, so here we go with the collar. And because of the lead on the part that there are no threads, this particular collar is counterboard to allow for that. And yes, I'm going to have to use a bigger collar. <laughs> I'm going to take a very superficial cut on the face of that collar to 
make sure that it is running true to the machine and to set my zero for my tool. Then I'll just back the carriage out however thick I want the final separation to be. And we should be golden. That is now the banking surface for the larger diameter. And all they need to do now is move the carriage out. There we go. <laughs> Don't forget to zero out your digital before you move the carriage. Note to self. And re-zero everything now. Hmm. Depending on how you set the part, depending on what the part looks like initially, this little unthreaded diameter right there could be your locator if you bore it precision. And if not, well, you're going to find out here pretty soon. That's an awfully long thread. If all went well, this should now slide through the end hole on the ram and engage the nut that connects to the link that connects to the crank arm. And put it together and find out. Before I get into the test fit of these parts right here, I'm going to tell you right now that these are not going to go together. Not. And this is the kind of work that I just thrive on. I love this kind of work. Putting this all together is going to be dependent on this thread going all the way to that shoulder, which is highly unlikely. Now there's two ways that we can rectify this block right here going all the way to this shoulder right here. Let's move that out of the way. We can undercut this to the root diameter of the thread that will allow it to pass through this little block right here. Or we can put a counterbore on the working side of this so as that unthreaded section approaches the block, it will go down inside the counterbore. I would say as far as strength is concerned, the counterbore is the better option. But I'm going to put it back in the lathe and I'm going to reduce this diameter here because I don't feel like putting a counterbore in there. And it's not going to see that much load anyway. It is absolutely imperative. Let me see, spin this down here real quick. It is imperative that that goes all the way to that shoulder because when you try to assemble this thing, the thread has to be put through there. The thread has to come up through the top, and you can see it just doesn't have enough room to swing. And that's because this is not fully engaged. That will be issue number one. Look out for that if you're building this. And let me show you issue number two because there are two, and dimensionally, if everything is done per print, per tolerance, you are going to run into this. 
under ideal circumstances, ideal, I mean absolutely spot on, spot on, no deviation from the print tolerances either way, the depth of this bottom slot right here where this little guy goes, right there, the depth of that registration surface where this brass piece hits and the center of this hole right here leave you five ten thousandths of an inch clearance between this flange and that surface right there so if that bottom pocket is oh, you don't print tolerance is plus or minus five if this is a thousandth off too high or not deep enough and this is a thousandth this way then you have a two thousandths interference fit and this is never going to get all the way to the shoulder right here let's prove that You can see it traversing the inside. It'll just go so far, and then it'll run into the bottom of that slot, which is exactly what's happening right now. That will not go any further. That is locked. Well, not locked, but it's making contact. Now, if you start messing with the depth of that slot, you're going to change how this seats and where the center of that tapped hole is in relationship to the hole coming through I would highly recommend and what I am going to do is reduce the diameter of that collar right there by about five thou what's that an eighth of a millimeter ish and then it should clear I'm also going to put this back in the machine and continue the bottom slot there's a much larger radius right here in this corner because that's the way it's drawn on the print I'm going to take this cutter that did the top slot here and go all the way to the bottom surface on this end so i'm going to effectively knock these corners out down here and give this flange a place to sit i'll do that off camera i will reduce this diameter off camera and i will be right back i love this kind of work love it when it doesn't go together but the print looks great and the print is ideal but there should be plus or minus on the print and there is not so let's do it off camera, I reduced the shoulder area right here. So now we can thread this in and it goes all the way to the shoulder, which is only ever going to happen at assembly. But you can't get this thing together if that shoulder won't go up against that block. This diameter was also reduced by 10 thousandths to make sure there's plenty of clearance. And yes, it is Saturday here in Texas. That's a great sound. I love it. My bike is sitting outside and I can't wait to get on it and ride home. Anyway, installed. You can see that shoulder bought me enough room to slide this down. Let's engage the hole. Slide it back a little bit. And it will now clear. Right there, you can see right there where those radiuses are going to crash into that shoulder. So that's the next thing I'll do. And then we have an adjuster. back those radiuses have to go all the way to the corner only in the only at the end just to let that collar seat and if you're going to say well why not come through from the front well because for some strange reason it's not concentric to the front and that's uh, quite unusual but i didn't make the plans i just got to follow the numbers let's go over to the mill knock that out i'll be back Bottom corners have been successfully knocked out, blended with the bottom surface. And what does that do for us? You can see how we have a nice registration now with no radiuses in the corner getting in the way of that. That is a 125 diameter cutter. It's about a three millimeter diameter cutter. And that is what you're gonna to need to do 
and just to make sure that it goes right up against it you can see a very small undercut on the shaft as well on both sides the one on the thread side is to the root of the thread the one on the other side is just to knock the radius out from the tool and i think that's a win let's put it together at least let's put this part together I had to go up against thread down thread out and there you have it success now as you turn the screw on the back, as you put a crank on this, you know, at assembly when this is all done, and you want to change the stroke of the ram, if you don't want to change the pin, the eccentric on the gear inside, you just dial this in, and you can see the stud on top will move. And that positions the ram stroke accordingly. Ready. That's all we got. I'm signing off again. Joe Pye here at Advanced Innovations in Austin, Texas. Wherever you are in the world, I hope you're well and happy and safe. And to all my friends and viewers and people and residents of Florida, I really, uh, my sympathies go out to you for your recent storm damage. I have family there and I have friends there. And it was unfortunate what had happened. It's going to take a long time to rebuild. So you guys are in our thoughts. Good luck. I hope nobody got hurt. Every day is a blessing. Joe Pye, I'm out. There's what I'm going home on today. This is a 2007 Honda VTX 1800 F model. This thing is a beast. And it is a beautiful sunny day and it's going to be about 82 degrees on the way back. And I just can't wait to go.